Hi, and welcome to Full Convert Table Mapping Tutorial. I have already loaded a save project, AdventureWorks to Postgres, and now I will show you how to change the mapping from the default to something completely different. Let's show the list of tables. I will select just a single table to make things clearer. I will click the Edit link next to the Employee table. First, we can deselect some columns. Let's deselect all of them now and select just a few columns. I will click Apply and Back button. You can see that now we have a new icon next to the table name, shown when not all columns are selected. Let's click Start Conversion and browse the target database to see what we got. Sure enough, only columns selected for conversion are present in the created table. Of course, all the data is copied as well. Let's go back and see how we can filter the data so not all of the data is copied. We support a custom WHERE expression, which filters copied data. Let's go back to Target Database to see which values do we have and use that to build an expression for filtering. We will use Business Entity ID values for filter. As we scroll, you can see values range from 1 to 290. Let's copy just those records which have business entity ID value up to 100. We'll go back and type a valid SQL expression that will be used when fetching data from the source database. A simple between command will do just fine. Of course, your expression can be as complex as you need. I will type business entity ID between 1 and 100. This expression is our filtering expression, and only records satisfying the expression we just wrote will be copied over. Let's convert again. You can see 100 records have been copied, as expected. Let's look at the target database and show the data. Yes, it copied just the records satisfying our expression. Let's explore more advanced options now. A manual mapping mode, which gives us full control. In manual mode, we can change everything, table name, column names, data types, and more. I will change the table name now. I will also change a field name. Let me increase the size of this field. For the organization level column, I'll change the data type. Instead of small integer, I will use big integer and make it not null as well. I will apply the changes and run the conversion again. We can see one more icon marking a manually mapped table. I will convert again, then browse the target. Yes, we have a new table. There are four columns with all the changes we made. New entity column name, a new data type size, as well as a bigger integer data type for the organization level column. And of course, data is copied as expected. Now we will go ahead and change the mode of data copying. We can instruct full convert not to copy data at all. We will skip data loading and leave the rest the same. Let's give it a try. Table is created. Data copy time is, of course, zero seconds. And when we check the table contents, it's empty, as expected. Let's go back to show another data copying option. Besides the default recreate data, we have an append data option. That's something you'll rarely, if ever, use. But if you have a scenario where you get fresh daily data that needs to be appended to your table, this is how you'll get it done. You would typically use our built-in scheduler to run such conversions. Append data mode makes sense only if we expect target table to already exist, as recreating table from scratch would, of course, ensure there is no data. Let's check the option to expect target table to exist. When we expect target table to already exist, we cannot change data types. We can only select which target columns are mapped to equivalent columns in source table. Also, we won't create indexes and foreign keys again, as table already exists, together with its indexes and foreign keys. I will now test the append mode. But first, 
Let me explain what exactly will happen. If you recall what we did half a minute ago, we opted to skip data, so our target table is empty right now. I happen to know that the table we are copying has a primary key defined, which forbids duplicate data. So when we append data the first time, we will simply populate the table and have no problems at all. However, I will then do conversion once more to verify that data is being appended. If everything is working correctly, on the second conversion, primary key will complain and we won't be able to append this data. Okay, let's test this. Here comes the first conversion. No problems, as expected, we appended the data to an empty table. Let's do another conversion and make sure target database says, hey, you're duplicating the data. And yes, now we get an error, as expected, which proves we are actually appending the data. Thank you for watching this advanced tutorial. If you need help, just write to support at spectralcore.com, where you will get all the help you need directly from the developers who wrote this application.